Perfect model of a war horse. It was a dark mahogany bay, almost brown, with black mane, tail and legs, and a small white star in his forehead. Great eyes standing out like those of a deer, small, delicate muzzle, delicate ears in which you could see the veins, and which were constantly in motion with every thought which passed through his mind, small and beautiful feet and legs as hard as the bone itself. He was completely and powerfully built, his actions superb. Head and tail carried high in the air, and had a way of tossing his head and champing his bit and tossing the foam over his breast that set your blood to tingling in sympathy with his spirit. Blackford wrote, I now found myself almost perishing from thirst from the intense heat and the violence of my exertions during the charge. It seemed that water I must have or die, and Comet was suffering as much as his master. In the rear of the enemy there was a small stream, and to this I determined to venture. Its banks were lined with enemy wounded who had crawled there to drink, and many had died with their heads in the water, the dark blood flowing into and gradually mingling with the stream. I looked for a clear place in vain, and at last Driven to desperation, had to lie down and watch for the bloodstains to pass, then drink until others came, lift my head for them to pass, then drink until others came. It was a long time before I could get Comet to touch it, but at last he succeeded, and after much snorting, pawing, and tossing of head, he drank his fill by following pretty much the same plan. Then, drawing a long breath, he turned and, and looked me full in the face as much as to say, Who would have thought, Master, that we would ever have had to drink such water as that? It was now about four o'clock and the battle raged with unabated fury. During the 1st Cavalry's encampment in the late summer of 1861, and seeing he needed help in another horse's backup, Blackford brought in Gilbert, the young African-American man who was the son of the servant named Charlotte who helped Blackford's wife. Blackford also obtained a second horse named Manassas that Gilbert rode on the long marches and also served to replace Comet to rest Comet. 
Blackford wrote, This horse Manassas was a yellow dun with white mane and tail, both of which he carried well up and presented a showy appearance, while his action was good. If I had not had Comet, I should have thought him a fine horse, but alongside of Comet, all horses seemed inferior. Manassas had none of Comet's engaging ways. In short, he was not a gentleman by either birth or education. Still, he did very well to relieve Comet and for Gilbert to ride on marches. Winter 1861 to 1862 in the winter camp near Fairfax Courthouse. We went into winter quarters near the battlefield of Manassas and took much pains to build log cabins, thinking they would be more comfortable than tents. A mistake I never made again. The tent with a fireplace and chimney at the same end as the entrances is far more comfortable in every way. The fireplace and entrance should never be at opposite ends. <coughs> I had my stable close by and had the floor laid with flattened logs. The comet used to annoy me sometimes by his pawing to keep warm. In this cold, rainy and snowy weather, when the other horses would be drawn up and shivering, Comet attracted the attention and applause of the whole regiment by his plan for warming himself. <laughs> and the cheers of the men seemed to be fully appreciated. <laughs> he would begin by pawing with one forefoot as fast as he could and do it for five minutes. Then, the same with the other forefoot. Then with both hind feet for a lifetime, he would kick as high in the air as he could get and with a vigor and rapidity that was laughable and wind up by a toss of the mane and the tail and loud snorts while the steam came pouring from him in this restored warmth and glow his exercise had produced. <laughs> 